it's this thing right here. This is my biggest fear when building industrial control panels. You may already be familiar with this. If anyone's built a panel before, you'll understand what I mean. The reason being is it's getting this lined up with that there, which is this here. <laughs> yeah, boy. It's always a squeaky bum moment mounting this and cutting this to the right length. So I'm gonna talk you through how to do it properly. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so onto the final bit of mechanical alteration and fabrication. Uh, and this is where you have gotta be really, really careful. It's always a bit of a squeaky bum moment for me going through this. So just, just take your time, be very careful, double check, triple check your measurements before doing any drilling um, because at this stage, if you've been through all of this panel building and wiring, and then at this stage, if you mess up the mounting of the door isolator, you're basically gonna have to do or replace the door and do the wiring of the door again and all the um, fitting of the cam switches, lights, plates, etc. It's just a right palaver, ball ache that you don't wanna do. So it just pays to take your time. And the first thing is RTFM, read manual all these different door isolators and main switches are different like even if you get a couple of very similar looking switches and isolators from the same manufacturer like abb that i'm using there's so many different types so don't ever assume that the one that you used last time unless it's exactly the same part number it's going to work again in the same way so be very careful read the manuals and take your time so yeah Obviously, I've read the manual and it tells you all the sort of measurements and stuff in here. Um, this is the shaft that I was using and the the, the switch. Uh, and what you want to remember um, to comply with BSEN 60204 is you want to make sure that when the panel is on and live, that if there's no other like door catches and door locks locked, that you can't open the door. Basically, when you switch it on, it locks the door into the switch so you can't open a door and it's live basically. So yeah, this is the, the main switch that I'm using, um, both from ABB. Uh, then the first step is basically cut your shaft to length and the details are on that are in the um, in the manual. Next, what I've done, and people do this lots of different ways, the way that I did it on this system was firstly, I wanted to be absolutely sure where it was being mounted and what it looked like and that it was nice and parallel along this face of the door plates um, because I was mounting the, the switch later on um, rather than at the start because I wasn't exactly sure where it would line up here if I mounted it on the back plate first. So I reversed it and I don't always do this, but so I went with the actual switch being fitted first, as I said, so it was nice and in line with this here. So I just wanted to double check that. Uh, and then I marked the center hole and yeah, just uh, you can see marrying it up there, just making sure that it was the right size and looks visually okay. Uh, and then for me, I've just got a cheapo laser level. I don't use it very often, so I'm not gonna fork out on an expensive one, but annoyingly, it doesn't have a magnet, and so I can't stick it to something metal. This panel here would have been great, um, and it doesn't have a tripod, <laughs> so I've just had to get it to the right height uh, using this, as you can see here. And then, as you can see, I basically got it bang in the center with a little bit of a drop, because what happens is the, the shaft, when it's in the switch on the back plate, it, it drops a little bit because it's however long, 200 millimeters or so, it does drop a little bit under weight. So I always drop it by about five to seven mil. That, tends to work out okay, but don't take my word for it. It will depend on the length of the shaft and other things, but that's typically what works well for me. So yeah, got that all centered up and we wanna make sure that this isn't going at any angle, that it is as perfectly square to the panel door as possible. Um, really important. And then yeah, just a close up, just checking that it's looking okay. Uh, then I open a door and I can see now where the center of the switch needs to go, the switch isolator or the actual main isolator. And then you can see, yeah, there, I'm now checking that it's got enough room because it was quite high up to this trunk in. 
So I'm just making sure that there is enough room, enough room to get these main incoming cables in as well. And as you can see, that's all good. Um, then I just want to protect these lights and cam switches when, when I'm drilling. I don't want any swarf getting into them. Uh, tools that I'm going to be using. So I've done a, or I will be doing a center tap. And then I'm just using a, um, a hole saw here. I can't remember what size it was, but those are the tools I'm using. Also, as you can see here, I'm, I'm making sure that there's no swarf going inside the panel. This is even more important. Important. So yeah, make sure no swarfs getting in any of the electronics or around any of the cable terminations. And then very nerve wracking moment, but I went for it and drilled the uh, hole saw, another angle there, and then I'll deburr it. So I'll just use a, a deburring tool uh, and then fit the main outside switch. And then I just put the shaft inside and just had a look like into the switch on the on the door side and just see, I had a look where it actually lines up based on where I positioned the switch earlier on. And you can see because there's a bit of a hang through the weight of it, it's a bit lower. There you go, you can see that there. Um, and now, I can't remember what I did here. I think I was holding it in place. But yeah, you can see that's basically what you want um, when we fit the switch. So again, I'm just making sure that there's no swarf that's gonna go into any of the components. This is a problem and a bit risky when you're doing this i.e. mounting the switch later on on the back plate. You've got to do things like this. Obviously, if I'd done it earlier, I wouldn't have all the other components and wiring done. So just something to be aware of. And you can see my little mounting holes are here. So one, two. So drill those, tap those, um, and then here, um, what am I doing here? I think at this stage, I've, I've got it mounted. I've got the shaft in, and now I'm just getting the right, the right length um, of the shaft again just check the tech manual uh yeah and that's that's it um but yeah as i said just be very careful take your time going through this double check your measurements triple check your measurements before drilling